your ability to win the game of live casting like all of business is dependent upon one thing and that is understanding your audience knowing exactly who they are and what their problems is absolutely critical now what I'm gonna guide you through is my original document that I use to define who the live cast profit toolkit is for and what the offer will be now before I get into the meat and potatoes which really describes the product and again I wrote this entire document over a period of a couple hours in my mind this is the second most important document you'll ever create but I'm gonna scroll down here to something um, which is our target customer now before I go through this I'm going to show you an example of what not to do okay so recently we did a launch um, and this was for make market launch it Academy now and I'm gonna I'm not gonna reveal anyone's specific contact information in here but I will tell you that we offered we told people hey fill out a hot seat so we can help you determine what your product should be and whether it's got an offer or an opportunity if you can sell it and uh, what it should do you should be able to charge for it and to tell you the truth I'll just be flat out honest with you I was appalled at the answers I got because out of hundred and thirty three total responses almost all of them couldn't answer a basic question of who is your customer so um, I'm, I'm again using this I click and by the way I use SurveyMonkey for all my surveys because I learned how to use it a long time ago and it works just fine it's cheap as heck but I can analyze results but here is um, I asked a question which is what is your vision or dream that you have for your product okay fine and then I said who is your ideal or target audience and this is what blew me away okay so I said anyone who uses products for da daily living fail okay any human that wants to use good quality organic secure care fail why because people want the results it would be um, uh, and I'll get into some specifics here. Okay, this was pretty good. Um, fellow members of the World Business Academy, da, 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 but it's like too many people. It's like, oh my God. Local businesses, large internationals, no. 25 year old one spending less money is it to age, no. Um, okay, everyone who bakes, fail. Okay, people who love healthy enough to work on it before they get a serious illness, no one cares about that. That's not a market. Okay. Uh, start your business for as little as thirty nine ninety. It's just again, these okay. Everyone drinks water. Now, okay. So parents of children, um, the list goes on and on. This one kind of got my attention at first. My target audience: new agers who are driving BMWs, yoga students, or three hundred. But it's sort of like I could tell by reading this, this person probably hates their customer. So these are just are are horrible. And like I said, I was appalled. But virtually all of these. Um, don't work which really tells me there's a massive opportunity here on another topic but I'm gonna get back to our target customer and again I'm not telling you this to make me right but I'm going to show you what really works okay and this document will be shared in the membership area so you can access it but here's who my target audience is my tar the target audience wants to be seen heard and recognized as an expert and authority in their niche or business and imagines themselves being a guest on a TV show like Shark Tank the Dr. Oz show our program that can cultivate catapult them to celebrity status in their field making them feel like this product will give them that access or ability is a big idea so um, that's my target customer but then I went down into breaking down who my ideal customers are and I've got three avatars okay now you're gonna notice as I read these that they get into how people feel okay so pay close attention because this is the secret to all of live casting is being able to know exactly how they feel because people are making buying decisions based on their feelings so I know that one of my ideal customers is a 30 or 45 year old doctor non-technical she might have a weekly podcast is comfortable on camera she dreams of being on TV she still practices in other words she's still in her business she wants to grow her online presence and she already knows that a weekly podcast show um, will get her the attention so these are people who have already taken action 
Now, here's a critical thing. She's reached a point in her career where she's re she realizes she's trading time for money and wants to get out of the daily grind of seeing patients and dealing with insurance claims. She knows the only way she can do that is with her own products, promoting her books, selling a line of supplements, and changing her business models to coach her patients through elective pa packages instead of supplement appointments. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. Now, I could insert this with any business here, but I got super specific on a medical person because I know they're making money. So I am focusing on a target audience that has cash to spend, okay? I've said this many times, never sell to poor people. Don't fix broken or confused people. Next, she um, already knows she wants to produce um, a monthly live cast. Now, you might say, oh my God, who is that? Well, I want to convert the, the already converted. Now, I also know she loves creating, helping people and doing her work and has a great community of other complimentary experts in her field. In other words, she's well respected. But here's the kicker. She's frustrated, okay? So I know what she loves to do. I know what frustrates her, okay? Because her medical world forces her to do mountains of paperwork, deal with an insurance. She's always in fear of legal issues. In other words, she knows she's going to get sued. Can't seem to break through her glass ceiling of billet business growth because she can't find her trained good people fast enough to manage her practice without her babysitting it and them. She's stuck working in her business versus on her business. Okay, Again, I could insert any business owner here, but again, I know someone who has a legal or a, um, rather a medical practice has these problems they feel this way i've worked with lots of i talked to dentists i talked to uh, med medical people okay she loves to present speak educate and teach doesn't love to market herself but has reached a point where she knows it's necessary in other words she's realized that just because she doesn't like to do something doesn't mean she shouldn't do it so again she's already reached the tipping point she doesn't feel as though she's technical enough and gets hung up on technology. She feels as though she's been screwed over by web developers. In other words, more frustration. Okay, Just starting to realize mainly she doesn't know exactly what she wants or needs. This make her feel, makes her feel stuck and the idea of having a live cast and being able to put on a show of her own without being uh, techie is very attractive to her because she can do it herself, teach, communicate, and talk about the things she loves most and get paid for it. Now, you may want to read this several times. But here's my other audience, uh, my other avatar, who's Jerry. Let's see if you're one of these. By the way, um, whenever we talk about different types of um, people, I often talk about three different categories of customers, which are, I'm going to just put a note in here, E, the enhancer. Okay, the next one is going to be R, the reinventor. or C, the creator, or recreator, okay? Um, now, why am I sharing this with you? Um, in the business of personal growth, personal development, and business opportunity, I uh, know that these are very, very common. The enhancer is someone who already has an existing business. That's Linda, okay? And uh, she wants to do something more. The reinventor is someone who wants to reinvent themselves um, they're, they've reached a point in their career where they're going to leave it. Linda's a bit of a reinventor also. The creator would be someone who wants to completely recreate or do something different. different. In other words, they're looking for a new opportunity. So in uh, avatar number two, Jerry, he's a 41-year-old consultant who works with small business owners, helping them build, build... Okay, so bottom line is this is someone who's already doing stuff, marketing, but he's got competitor challenges. He wants to find an edge that can allow him to work less, charge more money, get a high quality client who can see his value. Now he loves to consult, but check this out. He dreams of himself being in front of the camera, acting as a host with his clients and producing live shows for them that can supplement or replace their trade shows, travel, and traditional sales. And he knows that when he starts doing live casts, he's going to get an edge over his competitors, be able to charge a fee plus a percentage of profits when he helps his customers grow their business. Okay, and most likely start a local online tele interactive television show and get sponsor and advertising support. Again, it's going to appeal to his ability to make money in different ways. He hates the fact that he's constantly scrambling for the next project or client deal, is frustrated by the fact that he's been unable to set up a means to get monthly recurring revenue because his business is project-based, and he feels stuck because in order to grow, he needs more people 
Uh, but he doesn't want to bring on full-time employees because he doesn't want to take on overhead or risk. Okay, for Jerry, the idea of that he could start doing a weekly or monthly show with his clients, get paid on a regular ongoing basis, get a percentage of sales or growth from his clients is very exciting. If he can start his own interactive live TV show with sponsor support, that means he'll get recurring income without having to do lots of production work. Okay, now maybe this appeals to you if you're listening to this. Now, what's important is how did I learn about my customer number one or my prospect number one or my customer number two? It's because I'm out talking to my customers and surveying them all the time. I know what their pain is. So if you don't know exactly who your customer is, all you do is you draw from people you've sold to or supported in the past and think about what do they desire? You know, who are they? Who's your perfect customer? What is it that's driving them nuts? What do they hate? What do they love? Okay, notice I said hate. Okay. Now, this is what he loves. What he loves is, I could just say, what he loves is the idea. And again, Jerry, Jernell, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, this is more hate stuff. TJ. So successful author been on oprah been on lots of tv been on the road a long time here we're getting into frustration these are feelings okay doesn't like his business the overhead the stress of the fact that traditional television and media doesn't sell books products or generate a significant bump in web traffic or sales any longer the business has been realizing money but he's not keeping it hate frustration okay check this out built a product suite so I know this person has a real business has been on comf camera loves the idea okay of getting out running his business and believes by live casting he can escape his operationally focused life and move towards spending most of the time in creative mode that's really what TJ wants okay selling directly to his audience and by creating shows TJ will turn each episode into a regular podcast content that can organically grow his brand and audience. Shift will make him more popular, accessible with all, all the travel, expense, hassle, and complexity. Notice that the secret to getting to your ideal customer is understanding what frustrates them, what they hate, but then knowing what they love. And everything you do is about appealing to these basic fundamental human emotions that is the critical key to all of live casting and all of selling